Hey, how y'all doing? I'm AF, and this is my channel, AF Comics. This is where I do reviews for lesser-known indie comics. I give them exposure, and I just talk about things comic book related because I love comic books. Now, my first comic is going to be a more popular indie comic called Black Sands, Seven Kingdoms. If you don't know about Black Sands, it's an IP developed by Black Sands Entertainment. It's a startup publishing company founded in 2016 by two Army veterans, Manuel and Giselle Goodoy, with an emphasis of representation for so-called black people. I don't really, you know, ascribe myself to that nomenclature because I feel it's restrictive, but I'm just telling you what they describe themselves as. Anyway, and uh, Black Sands has been making a bit of waves on the internet. It's got its own animation department. It's a motion comic. It's on app where you can earn points and unlock rewards. A whole 10 yards, a whole 10. And I got to hand this to them. They really allow marginalized creators to have a voice and let that story be told by the people. So it was good stuff, good stuff. Even though the story is aimed at continuing the Afrocentric narrative that I think holds our people back, I gotta say it's a good attempt. They got their own line of comics, so I'll put the link below if you wanna check it out, subscribe, support, you know, whatever you do. But let's move on to the comic itself. First, before I start, I gotta say something. Avatar The Last Airbender has heavy influences on this comic. You know, you definitely probably saw this saw Avatar The Last Airbender and got inspiration for the characters, yet it's funny because it's probably Avatar The Last Airbender that got inspiration from the myth. So it was like the chicken before the egg type situation. You know, but if you read the comic and look at the character traits in Black Sands, you see what I'm talking about and you see the similarities. I ain't saying the gang a carbon copy of Asar and his crew, but they more like a pale imitation actually, but there's, there's similarities in design and function of the character types. Moving on. As per the name, Black Sands and Seven Kingdoms take place in well, Seven Kingdoms. My favorite number, by the way, path number seven. Anyway, the world is divided into seven kingdoms. Greece, Noi, Fibulos, Canaan, Canaan, <laughs> Sumer, Kush, and Kemet. Black Sands begins in Egypt, AKA Kemet, which purportedly refers to the fertile Black Sands, hence, well, Black Sands. However, Godoy is based in the story of the actual history of the first inhabitants of Egypt, being so-called black people. So it's a double entendre. Now, the comic takes place before recorded history, in a time when like legends roam the land, mortals have superpowers, but they aren't considered gods because the gods themselves are known as the ancients, and there's a constant warfare for resources between the kingdoms, between you know, people and the ancients that hunt the people, apparently, for no reason. So the story picks up with Asar, Set, Aset, and Nebet. Now, all of them are based on the Egyptian comedic nature with the same names, but here, their children. Which is a genius marketing tactic, honestly, because, you know, and like I said, they're not gods. The Egyptian pantheon is separate from the gods because the people don't worship or pray to them. I mean, they recognize them as royalty, or at least some of them do but not too different than ordinary people. Now, other than the fact that they got powers, you know? Saul, he wants to be the ruler of Kemet, and to do that, he has to prove himself, not only to himself, but to Ra as well. Current and first pharaoh are per ah of Kemet. And Asar has been trained by Ra with some questionable methods to be a god killer of sorts, or ancient killer. And in order to test himself, Asar fights similarly powerful children and even though the four are on a diplomatic mission from memphis to kerma Asar takes advantage of this to fight best the son of epitomach who's the nubian king and later the netaru which is the comedic word for deity of war now, they're all guided to kush by tahuti they're advising the rock when they arrive Asar almost immediately engages best but to stop by epitomach and told to go outside they do while I said, you know, tries to conversate with um, Amasimi, the queen of cook, the queen of her. I said wants to speak with Amasimi and a pedemoc's daughter, so, but Amasimi discouraged her by using some type of emotional manipulation. Set, you know, kind of scared, walks outside of the courtyard where Asar and Bess are preparing to fight. Asar is given more support by his sisters and brother, Seth, but my bad, I gotta say this, Seth. Set. He gets a bad rep in a lot of mythological circle, circles because, you know, he gets misconstrued as the devil of the Egyptian pantheon. But it should be known that he protected the boat of Ra during his long voyages across the sky. So 
there's a duality in his character kind of represented his form which is why i like his design a lot it's very in line with the mythos and how he looks but he's got the best character design to me you know he kind of looks like huey but like i said godoy probably got his influence from some a lot of other shows anyway so you got seth who has the powers of gar from naruto and crocodile from one piece with sand manipulation i mean gar and crocodile have the powers of set yeah that's better because look set got some extra sauce to them he can project illness and negative emotion from his eyes so take that sauke <laughs> I gotta say that again. I dig Seth's design the most. I mean, the vitiligo skin is fire, and I'm not gonna lie. David Linderman, David Linderman is the artist, and he did his thing with Seth. I mean, he did his thing with all the character designs and landscapes, but just Seth in particular for me. I just hope Manuel Godoy doesn't stick too close to the music, because you know, let's say the Jesus story had to come from someone, right? Moving on. We also have our set. So from what I can tell, our set strikes me as a combination of Sakura and Hinata. What I mean is she's like the more, but not so shy she can't speak to people. She seems to have like a power set similar to Storm from the X-Men, but bonuses on top of that. So by all accounts, she should pack a wallet. I mean, she did injure Asar in chapter five or uh, episode two, which is the one you, you, uh, you partaking of the media with a, a bolt of lightning. So that shows how tough Asar is, but she ain't nothing to play with either. She stopped. Mama knew it before she had any real, I mean, excuse me, her mother knew it stopped her from doing any real damage. So, point one for Mama knew it. Next, we got Nabet, who can change her appearance at will, which is always a cool power. If you ever seen like Mystique from X-Men, then you can imagine what Nabet can do. Saw so has super strength and durability because boy, he can take a while. He and Bess go at it, but before they do, we learn a little bit of Asar's past. This is where we learn that Geb is a good dad and Ra is a stern grandfather. Really stern. Back in the present, we see that under Ra's tutelage is Asar. He's got a bit of a ruthless streak now, you know. But that doesn't stop Bess, who kind of gives him as good as he gets. And Bess uses like a sonar um, clap to like decimate Asar's eardrums. That being said, Asar counters with his own attack, and they both end up in separate parts of the kingdom. You know, Asar, he's helped up by an old man before Nua arrives, and she rewards the dude for his services, also flirting with <laughs> the attendant. But this is actually where we find out that the main characters aren't revered as gods. Like some people don't even know them, but they can tell their royalty, you know. Moving on, Nua and Asar meet Ra at the entrance, and Ra expectantly gives a terse response to Asar's victory, just saying good, which Asar likes, and Ra just moves on, you know? So, near the end of the chapter, Set and Asar talking, and Asar is wondering what kind of ruler he's gonna be. Set tells him that the decision is up to Asar, ultimately. Finally, we get an after credit scene. It takes place in Suma between the Ancient One and as of yet unrevealed character. We talk about bringing the world under one master before the comic phase of life. So overall, I think the first arc, Rumble and Kerma, was a good introduction to the series. We got introduced to a slew of new characters, learned some background, and got oop, oop, and got a few cool action scenes. The art by like David Linderman is really, really good. I mean, it's easily industry level with a mix of like anime, American animation, like, comic book style and um, drawing mixed in. So you can fully make out the character designs, the landscapes are nice, it's glossy, you can really feel the movement and weight behind these illustrations. The only thing I have to take away from this is like the dialogue. At points it can get a little odd and like the word choice and characters have like strange moments of exposition that seem a little off. Other than that, there's so much potential for the series because there's so much lore to draw from. So there's definitely a longevity to be had here. I'm really glad that this topic is being put in position appropriately and the original inhabitants of the land of Egypt are being shown. The door has a nice platform and seems to have a good marketing strategy, so I'll be watching to see how this goes. Alright, AF Comics.